I'm Demelza Fox from Rockstar Priestess and I train priestesses to be rock stars. And today we're talking about why the modern day world needs priestesses. When we think about priestesses, we often think of beautiful ancient temples with the rolling waves breaking the shore and these women draped in beautiful fabrics, walking in procession and doing old timey priestess things. Who knows? Burning incense dancing for a statue, all that stuff. And the idea of a priestess as imagined through this ancient lens is quite hard to recognize with everyday life, with the modern world. And the function of the priestess has been lost so much in the midst of time. And it is actually secretly, I really believe what the modern Western world really, really, really needs. So the role of a priestess is to be someone who helps people initiate through life passages. This is a very big role of the ancient priestesses and of modern day priestesses. In ancient times, we have stories of high priestesses um, officiating ceremonies for rites of passage. So we would have young boys and young girls would go to the temple to initiate into the youth phase of their life or attending the big festivals when they're entering their maidenhood phase or whatever, the life of the temple and by extension the rites and roles of the priests and priestesses in there would help people initiate in and really anchor in the different phases of their life. And this is very clear in Greek, ancient Greek Hellenistic religion. That's what priestesses did, but also in in ancient Greece, priestesses were kind of regular people too. So it's both and. And in the modern world, we don't really have those rites of passage. We don't have anything to step into or initiate into in our Western world other than marriage. Marriage is the big boy. Marriage is the big thing that everyone can go wild for. And man, oh man, do people go wild for it. Why else do you think people spend 10 grand, 20 grand, 30 grand, 40 grand on one day, on a wedding, because it's the only rite of passage they're gonna get. And that's why people think about it. That's why people dream about it. That's why people initiate into that rite of passage, regardless of whether they're actually in the right place to do it or not, yeah? It is such a, big thing and it means so much to us to have these rites of passage thresholds and if you've ever had one you know how meaningful and important it is and when we're in an anchorless world because I really believe that these rites of passage provide anchors in our life they give us time and opportunity to sit in presence and be here now and really consciously step into something new Consciously stepping into something is very different from unconsciously stepping into something, yeah? Um, what can I have as an example for this? Consciously choosing and making a commitment and telling people, right, I am going to start running. That's what I'm going to do. I'm consciously making this commitment. I'm going to do it. That's what I'm going to do. Is very, very different to having the idea of, yeah, I'm going to start running, maybe I'll run a little bit today, maybe I'll run a little bit tomorrow, yeah? When there's conscious intention behind something, it makes something hmm, anchor down and feel more in this world. And when we only have one rite of passage, we only have weddings, all of our desires and everything that would have been taken across all the different rites of passage we could step into as human beings. We could have rites of passage for menarche when women and girls step into their having their first moon blood. We could have youth rites of passage where men are being, where boys are stepping up into men. We could have um, rites of passage for kids where they're getting bigger now so they're taking responsibility for something we can have rites of passage for first time you have sex we could have rites of passage for divorce for croning for queening for moving on from one phase of your life into another like a divorce ceremony or a breakup ceremony can be a rite of passage 
a miscarriage ceremony can be a rite of passage. A, I've quit my job, I'm moving on, ceremony can be a rite of passage. And this is what priestesses do. We hold these rites of passages for people. And not all priestesses do it in exactly that way. And not all priestesses are specifically rites of passage ceremonialists, but this is one of the really important roles that the modern priestess has. Our world is desperate for some kind of rite of passage. We are passageless. We are just fumbling around and it feels like everything just molds into the next bit of life and there's no conscious intent. So as a priestess, we are able to offer this place for people to choose from consciousness. Okay, this is what I am choosing to step into. I'm doing my rite of passage now. Okay, this is what has happened in my life and I am going to look at it and come to terms with it and step through this rite of passage. That is what priestesses do. And expanding on this path of the modern day priestess, just like in the ancient temples and times where the temple was the hub of the whole community. Everyone would have been involved in the temple all the time. It would have been the place you went to for all sorts of stuff. The priestess is also someone who creates circles and communities, who creates places for people to come and connect with each other. And that's another piece of why the modern world needs priestesses, whether or not they're doing it very obviously or very subtly, because our world, even though we have so much knowledge, we have so much mind stuff going on, we have the internet, we have thousands of books, we have all this written knowledge, we are missing this heart connection and this ability to be vulnerable and connect with other people. And as we all know, this stuff is really, really cool, but this is the stuff that makes life worth living, yeah? And priestesses, part of what they do is they provide the, the opportunities and they set the scene so that people can open their hearts and connect with others and have permission to be vulnerable and be guided to go within and look at themselves and explore their inner world. Because the priestess archetype and what the priestess holds in the modern day world, man, it's so different to what we've been told, like for the last five, six, seven, eight hundred years. Our priestess is not like a Christian priest who holds the only pathway to God, who you're only going to learn about God through that person who is your intermediary. And by intermediary, I mean, they are the person who holds and controls your access to the divine. A priestess is a gatekeeper. And what she does is she helps people open their own gates to the divine. And their pathway to the divine might be nothing like yours, but that's cool because we know that all pathways to the divine, they're all going the same way. They've just got different costumes, yeah? So as a priestess, our work is to really hold those rites of passage, to create spaces for community and vulnerability to blossom, and to really, goodness gracious, I've forgotten what I was saying, my mind. And to really help people find their own connection with their spirituality in whatever way that works for them. Whether that's through meditating for two hours a day or whether that's through spending Sunday mornings going through an art gallery. We're opening people up to that presence of the sacred in our physical world. And these are all things the modern world needs. We need those rites of passage. We need to feel conscious and directed in our lives and anchored in what happens. We need that connection and that ability to be vulnerable and to feel loved more than ever. Holy moly. We all know this after the last few years. There is so much discord and disconnection. That needs something to soothe it. And we need to be able to open up to how divine and beautiful and magical the world is. So people don't get stuck in these patterns of 
deep sorrow and hopelessness and terror and fear and believing we live in a flipping awful terrible world because when we open to that divine when the physical world and the money and the news when that's all there is it's overwhelming but when you can go within and see that spiritual universe within you and when you can see the world and see the beauty in it your life is just so much better i really believe that modern day priestesses are so needed i also believe that most of the world does not know that what they are looking for is a modern day priestess but never mind we are here and we're gonna get to them anyway and if you are really feeling like this path of the modern day priestess is for you reach out i am running a priestess of avalon year-long training to teach you these arts of being a practical practicing priestess who holds ceremonies and circles and all that good stuff and if you would love to learn more about that you can learn more about it below or you can book in a call to chat with me about your priestess dreams thank you so much for joining me for avalon priestess tv and i'm sending you lots of love